is threatening the U.S. and Taiwan. But would China really go to war over a name? Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. The Financial Times reported last week that the Biden administration is considering allowing Taiwan to change the name of its representative office in Washington to include the word Taiwan. In response, the Chinese Communist Party threatened to attack Taiwan and maybe the U.S. Don't worry, it makes sense. In a stupid kind of way. The U.S. and Taiwan don't have official diplomatic relations. That's been the case since 1979, when the U.S. switched from recognizing the Republic of China, aka Taiwan, to recognizing the People's Republic of China as the true government of China. And if you're thinking, why can't there just be two Chinas? There are two Koreas. There are two Congos. Well, back in the 1970s, the answer was that both Chinas were essentially claiming the same territory, including both mainland China and Taiwan, and insisting that they were the true government of all of China. Think of it like Highlander. It can be only one. Plus, the Chinese Communist Party is obviously the Kurgan. But while both the PRC and the ROC both once claimed to be the true China, that's not so much the case anymore for the ROC, which mostly goes by Taiwan now. The current Taiwanese government has more or less abandoned their claim over all of mainland China, and they just want to interact with the rest of the world as Taiwan. The problem is, the Chinese Communist Party will do anything it takes to keep that from happening, including threatening to go to war. So most countries don't have official diplomatic relations with Taiwan, but they have unofficial diplomatic relations, including unofficial embassies. They need these unofficial embassies because the reality is Taiwan is a sovereign country with its own government and borders. So other countries need a way to deal with things like travel visas. The unofficial U.S. Embassy in Taiwan is called the American Institute in Taiwan. The unofficial Taiwanese Embassy in the U.S. is called the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office. And if you think that's a mouthful, it used to be called the Coordination Council for North American Affairs, which was just confusing. So what's the big deal with changing the name of the official embassy from the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office to the Taiwan Representative Office? It's a change that has support within the Biden administration, including from Biden's Asia czar, Kurt Campbell, members of the National Security Council and the State Department. The Chinese Communist Party hates this. Taking the economic and cultural part out of the name implies that the representative office also represents Taiwan politically. The Communist Party doesn't want other countries to officially use the word Taiwan when dealing with Taiwan. In fact, the Chinese regime has been pressuring countries to remove the word Taiwan from their unofficial Taiwanese embassies. Between 2017 and 2019, seven of Taipei's missions in countries without diplomatic recognition, including Nigeria, Jordan, and Ecuador, had Taiwan or Republic of China forcibly removed from their names by their host countries under pressure from Beijing. At this rate, I'm surprised the Chinese regime hasn't gone mad because the URL of the website is taiwanembassy.org. It has gone mad, though, about the possible name change. According to the Foreign Ministry, China has officially logged solemn representations to the U.S. over the issue. And my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, has gone further. Much further. Because it's the Communist Party's barking Rottweiler. The Global Times released an editorial saying China would teach the U.S. and Taiwan Island a real lesson. First, it tries to frame changing the name of Taiwan's representative office as the U.S. abandoning its One China policy and an escalation toward recognizing Taiwan's independence. And it says if the U.S. and Taiwan go through the name change, China will have to recall its ambassador from the U.S. Because if the U.S. isn't stopped, then we will have to face the possibility of more Taiwan representative offices emerging in a batch of capital cities. The horror. But of course, a diplomatic response alone isn't enough, because this touches on one of the Chinese Communist Party's red lines, 
they have to take severe economic and military measures. The article then threatens economic sanctions and even an economic blockade against Taiwan. And it also says the People's Liberation Army should fly fighter jets directly above Taiwan's airspace in order to claim it as their own. A step the Global Times says the mainland must take sooner or later. Now's as good a time as any, because Taiwan won't dare to fight back, and if they do, the Chinese regime will attack. The Global Times article goes on to say that the Chinese regime is not scared of going to war with the U.S. and Taiwan, and because it doesn't look like the U.S. and Taiwan will completely back down, the Chinese Communist Party needs to be prepared to blow them out of the water in the Taiwan Straits. Lovely. Now you might think the Chinese regime going to war over a name change is about as dumb as going to war over a bucket, or over a guy named Jenkins getting both his ears cut off. Both of which actually started real wars. Look it up. But it's not just about the name change. It's about America's support for Taiwan. In the Global Times' eyes, the name change is the first step toward having U.S. troops in Taiwan. And the Chinese Communist Party is also upset about a secret meeting that happened between U.S. and Taiwanese officials last week in Maryland. It's known as the Special Channel. The Taiwanese officials include Foreign Minister Joseph Wu. The Special Channel isn't new, but it's been traditionally kept under wraps to avoid antagonizing Beijing. And this is the first time the Biden administration has hosted high-level in-person talks with Taiwan. Well, now U.S. officials have leaked the meetings to the Financial Times, which means they don't care if this meeting antagonizes Beijing. Hmm. More after the break. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party is throwing a hissy fit over Taiwan wanting to rename its unofficial embassy the Taiwan Representative Office. The party hates it when people call Taiwan the C-word. Country. But they also hate the word Taiwan because it implies Taiwan is a country that has equal standing with China. That's why that Global Times article kept calling it the Taiwan Island instead. The Chinese regime really goes all in on that Orwellian language manipulation, which is why Taiwan has to compete in the Olympics as Chinese Taipei. But this latest brouhaha over the Taiwan Representative Office didn't actually start with the U.S. No, it started with that Baltic troublemaker, Lithuania. To its credit, Lithuania is a country of over three million people and has been standing up to the Chinese Communist Party on a number of issues, including Taiwan. Back in July, Lithuania and Taiwan announced they would open diplomatic facilities in each other's countries, aka unofficial embassies. Taiwan's will be called the Taiwanese Representative Office in Lithuania. Oh no, they said Taiwanese. The Chinese Communist Party hates this. They retaliated by trying to punish Lithuania politically and economically. They recalled the Chinese ambassador to Lithuania. And they stopped trade with Lithuania. And in the face of this bullying, Lithuania didn't back down. In fact, Lithuania recalled its own ambassador to China and is urging the EU to cut its reliance on China. But Lithuania is an outlier. Like I said earlier, the Chinese regime has pressured a bunch of countries to change the name of their Taiwan representative offices. And they're not just bullying countries. Chinese officials are using their positions in the United Nations to force organizations around the world to change how they name Taiwan. They've even targeted a Colorado high school. China sits on the UN Committee on Non-Governmental Organizations, which authorizes groups big and small to participate at UN functions. Chinese officials look for any references those groups have ever made to Taiwan, for example on their website. And if it doesn't say Taiwan Province of China, they deny the application until the group fixes it. Most groups just do it because they want to be able to go to the UN because they probably think it's just some bureaucratic, administrative thing that doesn't really matter. They don't understand what the Chinese Communist Party is doing. Although changing a bureaucratic, administrative thing at the UN is one way the Chinese regime was able to take over Hong Kong from the British. I talked about that in this episode from 2017. Anyway, no group is too small for the Chinese regime to target. They even went after the World Bicycle Industry Association for working with a group called the Taiwan Bicycle Association. 
That reminds me of last year when China pressured a bird watching organization to cut ties with the Taiwanese bird watching group. First bird watching, then bicycling? What other hobbies will the Communist Party target? Watch out, boogie boarders. You're next. Hey, remember back in 2018 when China threatened airlines for not explicitly saying Taiwan was part of China? That was the same year a local council in Queensland, Australia painted over a fish with the Chinese word for Taiwan written on it in the colors of Taiwan's flag. The Taiwan fish was painted by two Taiwanese Australian kids as part of a public art project. But the Chinese Communist Party has gotten people so scared of offending China that they'll censor a painted fish. This might seem almost farcical. And it is, but it's also dangerous. I'll tell you why after the break. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party is trying to force the world to refer to Taiwan as a province of China, instead of the sovereign country that it is in reality. It's an interesting philosophical question. If no one recognizes Taiwan as a country, does it still exist? Some people argue that changing the name of Taiwan's unofficial embassy is not worth it. The Council on Foreign Relations, a U.S. think tank, argues that it's a mistake. Among other things, they say it's not useful because it's a purely symbolic gesture. And instead of spending energy on symbolic issues, the United States and Taiwan should be working toward a bilateral trade agreement, collaborating on supply chain security, and improving deterrence in the Taiwan Strait. Of course, the U.S. and Taiwan should be working on those important issues, but allowing Taiwan to reclaim its name is not a symbolic gesture. It's meaningful. That's because the Chinese Communist Party, like with all communist regimes, doesn't use language as symbolism. It uses language as a very real way to gain power and control. By making sure that no one calls Taiwan a country, they make people think it's not a country. The party is using language to claim Taiwan and its race, its existence. That's because the party can't erase Taiwan's existence through an invasion, yet. This is psychological warfare part of the Chinese regime's political warfare against Taiwan and the rest of the world. The Communist Party is trying to demoralize Taiwan and to convince other countries it's not worth defending. That Global Times article I talked about earlier is completely about psyching out both the U.S. and Taiwan, making them back down. But there's only one way to deal with a bully, which is to stand up and fight back. That's why China is so mad at Lithuania. How dare such a small country stand up to the Chinese Communist Party? What if other countries start following their blueprint? Renaming Taiwan's unofficial embassy, the Taiwan Representative Office, is the verbal equivalent of America's freedom of navigation operations in the South China Sea. It tells the Chinese regime, we're not listening to you because you have no control here. The Chinese Communist Party hates this. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army a viewer who supports our channel on the crowdfunding website Patreon and Locals. Ace Ventura asks on Locals, how does someone properly recognize the evils of the CCP without unknowingly becoming more prejudiced against ethnically Chinese people? Well, Ace, like any other group of people, Chinese people aren't a monolith. Once you start thinking Chinese people are like this, that's not good. And in a lot of ways, ordinary Chinese people are the CCP's first victims. They are constantly monitored and censored. They live their lives knowing there are certain things they're not allowed to think or say. Even if they leave China, they can be monitored and their actions used to threaten friends and family in China. Also, Chinese people can't vote. They're not choosing their leaders. Are there Chinese people who support the CCP and don't believe it's done anything wrong? Of course. There are Western people who believe the same thing and they don't even live under Chinese censorship. Treat people as individuals, Try to have empathy and compassion, and don't judge people based on a group identity. Thanks for your question, Ace Ventura, and thank you for supporting China Uncensored on Locals. If you haven't checked out Locals yet, come join us. We're starting a new community there away from YouTube censorship. It's free to join, but if you become a paid subscriber, you get some additional perks, like having us answer your questions in our exclusive Locals live stream. We just did our first live stream there on Friday. If you haven't seen it yet, come check it out on chinauncensored.locals.com. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.